Once the costs have been calculated, Prince Chun is dealt a bitter blow. The damages are far more expensive than he had realized, and the work involved will be tremendous. The 17 arch bridge has survived, but its bridgehead is badly damaged. The foundations of Fu Xiangge have been partially destroyed. The bronze pavilion has remained intact, but is engulfed within galloping vegetation. The marble boat has lost its floors, and that too is being swallowed up by nature. Also used is catalpa wood, darker in tone, offering play with shadows and perspective. It is the first time that so many folding screens are used. The ceilings are lined with silk from the south, a silk decorated with bats. Pillars here divide the space into three parts. Empress Cersei found the building so perfect that she longed to install herself there directly, but she was obliged to be patient. She was adamant, though, that her birthday party was to be celebrated there. Emperor Xian Long's mother had celebrated her birthday in her new home, and Cersei demands no less. In 1901, a treaty is proposed and accepted by Cersei, who wants the Allies to leave her country but it imposes the creation of embassies in parts of the city that will be forbidden to Chinese people. It becomes the foundation for rights and concessions in the principal port cities such as Shanghai. The Chinese must also send ambassadors abroad. The defeat of the Chinese army wins very favorable territorial rights for the Allies. Manchuria goes to the Russians, Shandong to the Germans, the basin of the Blue River is to be controlled by the British, for the French, taking advantage of their control of the Tonkin, they settle in the three southwestern provinces. 